Hi folks, welcome to this two-part walkthrough of my new After Effects plugin called Bang, which generates 3D procedural muzzle flashes. In this first part, we'll be using Bang to add some simple flashes to a handgun and showing how to automatically relight your footage. In part two, we'll be exploring the plugin in more detail, adding a second flash instance, looking at petals and other cool stuff like that. I thought we'd start quite simply by adding some muzzle flashes to this shot of a lady firing a 9mm pistol. I've already added some layer markers which will uh, tell me where to put my bang keyframes. So we'll start by dragging the bang effect which can be found under the quarter light pictures folder of your effects and presets panel straight onto the footage. As you can see it's drawn the, uh, the default flash. And it adds four effects to your layer. The bang module selector, uh, which is where you can add extra flash builders, add, add extra instances, and a relight a module, which we'll look at at the end of this section. The flash builder, which is where you set your flash properties, like your shape, its length, whether you've got any petals, which we'll look at in part two, uh, and its color. The flash instance, is where you position and orient your uh, flashes and set its trigger keyframes which turn the flash on and off and the bang render itself uh, where all the flashes are rendered and there are some global settings such as glow so i'm going to come back to the flash builder uh, a bit later on uh, but first we're going to delve straight into the flash instance this is where you'll be doing most of your work once your flash is set up and i think this uh, default flash is a good place to start so there are two aim systems uh, that are available, the easy aim, which is the default, and this YZ X rotation. Um, easy aim is uh, very, very straightforward. It's just two uh, points that you can drag. So you can move your, uh, your position point to the origin of the flash, which is usually the front of the barrel, and your aim point, which represents uh, the back of the barrel, uh, like so. And as you, as you move it, you can see that the flash is rotating down, up, to the left and to the right. So there's only a uh, need to use two keyframes with this uh, particular aim system. If you want, you can switch to the YZX rotation, which enables these two parameters here, sweep, which sweeps the flash around on the Y axis and tilt, which moves it up and down on its z-axis. Uh, however, you'll need to uh, set position, sweep, and tilt keyframes uh, for that, uh, and it's not quite as interactive. So I'm going to switch back to easy aim and start positioning our flashes and uh, triggering them. So for now, I'm just going to turn off this uh, checkbox. This is the checkbox that triggers the flash on and off. I'm going to zoom in and start to position our flash. Uh, so I think I'm going to switch to the square shape, which is more appropriate for this particular type of gun. I'm going to bring it forward quite a lot in Z, which makes the flash bigger. like so and set my position and aim keyframes and when I'm happy that I've got it in about the right place let's click at the bang uh, helper button here which adds two keyframes per flash one to turn the trigger on and one on the next frame to turn it off and it's as simple as that so I'm just going to go to the next flash point and drag my easy aim controls, click bang. Whoops, careful not to move the layer itself. <laughs> you don't have to get it 100% accurate, we can always come back and tweak these later on.
last one. This one isn't uh, pointing uh, directly towards us like the rest, is it? So I'll angle it a bit more to the side. Okay. There we go. So that didn't take long. Uh, I've added my six flashes. Let's just see what that looks like. Pretty good. I think we'll tweak a few of these. Just minor tweaks. Good. Uh, so this um, very, you know, start of the flash looks a little bit sharp compared to the gun. The gun's quite out of focus. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, tweak the defocus on this a bit more. Let me just turn off uh, the overlay there a second so it's easy to see what we're doing. Yeah, something around five. Pixels defocus looks about right for that. Play that back. Okay. So now we've done that, now we've got our keyframes um, that we're happy with. I think we should uh, look at the shape of this flash. Um, it's a good starting point, but I think we can we can do better. So in the flash builder is where you uh, where you do that, and uh, the flash shape profile is your uh, your first port of call for changing the shape. You've also got the length here. You can make sort of very small stubby ones or quite long ones. Uh, let me see. I think I'll leave it about two hundred and forty pixels. Uh, you can. Change the radius of the flash. You can have these enormous, uh, very sort of thick flashes, or these quite thin ones. Uh, I think you know we'll just we'll just leave it around the default setting for now. These are your uh, profile um, presets. It comes with four preset shapes plus this starter. Uh, blank preset that you can use to sort of create uh, any kind of shape you like. Um, just click Alt on your keyboard or Option on a Mac uh, to change to this pen tool with a plus uh, sign next to it to click and add handles. And these handles can be moved in order to create the, the shape that you want. So I could create like a panning out shape like that, but I'm not sure that's good for uh, for this type of gun. Um, these shapes here are, I think, better suited to uh, things like assault rifles. But this shape works quite well uh, for this particular gun. Let's see what that looks like on the run. Hmm. Pretty good. I think this one could be swept a bit further round. So let me turn overlays back on and yeah, that's better. Okay, great. So the shot's nearly complete. Just save my work. I uh, do though think that something's missing and uh, if you look at this shot it's quite a dark room um, and a flash that bright would I think illuminate uh, our actress here and part of the back wall as well. So I mean if you were shooting this um, yourself then you might want to include some interactive lighting. Uh, I recently directed a short film and for that we used a, a sound activated strobe light to add interactive lighting and I'll show you a shot from that in part two. 
Um, but this is stock footage that I downloaded and uh, and there's no interactive lighting. So we can help that out by using the Relighter module, which when I click on the button at the, uh, at the top here in my module selector, adds the uh, Relighter module. And you can already see that it's uh, it's it's started to do um, to add a little bit of light, and it uses a mat uh, which defaults to the uh, the footage that you're um, that you're working with. Uh, you can obviously roto uh, your own luma mats if uh, if you want a lot of control. Uh, this footage actually works quite well as uh, as its own mat, and we can see the mat itself by clicking in the mat preview. Uh, drop down here and selecting, so the view uh, drop down and selecting map preview. Um, anywhere that's light, the relight will affect more than anywhere that's dark. Pretty standard stuff. And we can crush the mat here using, uh, using this slider, just so that we can affect our actress a little bit more than the background. And we can affect how much, uh, where, where the, uh, the the spread of light from our flash uh, affects. So at the moment, we've got this arbitrary value of, of 10. Uh, the smaller it is, the less it affects it. And so I'm just going to drag it out a bit till it affects her. Yeah, like that. We've also got this ambient light here, which kind of flares out the whole of the shot. And and by the way, there's no there's no keyframes. You don't have to actually uh, click any kind of relight keyframes because it uses the uh, instance uh, flash keyframes and the position and the brightness of your flash to affect the relight. So I think there's too much ambient there. It's like there's a ton of atmosphere in the shot, which there isn't really. I'm just going to put that back down to about fifteen, which is the default. And relight like gain here is how much that affects our uh, our mat. So if I play that back. You can now see that the flash is adding some nice interactive light onto our actress, and it makes the shot look a whole lot more realistic. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I think we'll leave it there and I'll see you in part two where we'll be looking at uh, adding some petals, adding randomization and adding a second instance of a flash uh, to a shot. See you there.